Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel of a preacher, a minister, with a sense of humor. Even a subtle sense of humor. Today's video is a blast from the past yet again. It's about um, two, maybe three years old. So I'm 35 now. This is like a 32-year-old Tom Griffin. Definitely less mature, but uh, not lacking faith and zeal at all. Really what you're going to be seeing is a video of a preacher who's bored in his house just being a goofball. So uh, first off, I hope you enjoy it, and second off, I wonder if you'll notice my subtle humor. By the end of it, there's no missing it, <laughs> but it starts off very subtle. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Yeshua by night. He came to Yeshua by night. And he's a Pharisee. He says to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no one can do these things that you do unless Elohim is with him. Yeshua answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Nicodemus says to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Smart Alec. Yeshua answered her, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim. That which is, of, is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Yeshua answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know, and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. That right there is key. We testify of what we know and what we have seen. What do the Jews, what do the Jews know? They worship who they know. The Jews just, they just know who God is. I think that might be a major player in the reason why they don't ex accept him fully. He's really kind of honestly super scary and it, it's hard to accept him fully. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Elohim. We could spend probably a solid week talking about just what was said there and unpacking every very pregnant word that leads to very pregnant sentences, that leads to very pregnant concepts. I mean, everything about all of existence is wrapped up in just those few words right there. It's, it's beautiful. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men, they love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. What does that mean? That means that these guys are constantly trying to cover up what they're doing. They're constantly trying to come to, come to Yeshua in the veil of night, covering this up and covering that up. What's going to happen if you try to uncover what somebody's been working all their lives to cover up? For the most part, they're going to get real real upset about it. 
It makes them feel uncomfortable. And plus, they worked all that time covering it up. What we need to be doing is loving people and allowing them to come to the Lord who is skilled in how to uncover those things and how to wash them with his blood and allow them to come to him and recognize him as being who he is. He's the master. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in Elohim. There's a lot wrapped up in there, too. You can't be doing any good unless it's in Elohim. Hallelujah. After these things, Yeshua and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John was baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute, some of John's disciples and the Jews, about purification. And they came to John and said, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. All right, so get this. John's job is to prepare the way for the Lord. Yeah? Okay. And here's the Lord doing what he does, bringing people into the fold. And then John's disciples come to him like it's a problem. This guy Jesus? Yeshua? He's running around baptizing people. We got to do something about this. Bro, are you serious right now? Yeah, dude. He's like, baptizing more people than us. Dude, you're so lucky that I don't just kick you in the shins right now. What are you talking about? Ugh. You're killing me, Smalls. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not Mashiach, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has certified that Elohim is true. For he whom Elohim has sent speaks the words of Elohim. For Elohim does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hands. He who believes in the Son has ever lasting life, and he who does not believe, the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim abides on him. That's kind of cool what just happened there. Uh, the, the writer of the scripture says something small, and then he says it again in a different way. I love it when God does that. If a thought or an idea is a hub, a lot of times what he'll do is You'll be reading through the scripture, and it'll be like, I wonder if that's what he's saying. Well, if it's a truth, then he's going to say it in several different ways and in several different passages. And if it truly is a hub, something that's reality that you can stand on, a fruit, if it is a characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit or of God himself, all these spokes are going to be coming into that hub and he's going to say it over and over and over again and this one we just heard him say that if if you do anything outside of God it's evil if anything that you do that's inside of God is is a good thing that you've done and he just said that again right here he who believes in the son has everlasting life and he who does not believe in the son shall not see life but the wrath of Elohim abides in him. Another way to say that is every good tree produces good fruit. 
and every bad tree produce, produces bad fruit. Good tree cannot produce good fruit. Bad tree cannot produce... Wait, I just said that wrong. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Duh. A bad tree cannot produce good, good fruit. And then he brings it home. He says, every tree that does not produce good fruit, everything, if it can be metaphorically linked, everything can be metaphorically linked to a tree. Everything that exists, if it is not producing good fruit, it's going to be cut down and cast into the fire. Therefore, you, my brethren, will know them by their fruits. And that goes on to say, it gives you a little bit more encouragement. It tells you that if you're going to go build a house, or if you're going to exist, don't build on the sand. The sand shifts. It takes time to shift, but it's going to shift at some point, and the walls are going to come crumbling down. Instead, dig deep. Put that foundation on the rock. And you will produce good fruit. Just like if you're alive, you're going to be breathing. Thanks so much for checking out another episode of Gleaning the Scriptures. I appreciate you for being here. And uh, we'll see you next week. See ya. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth, and he then he.